Welcome to episode 42 of Driver's Seat Blog Radio. As always, I'm your host, David G. Firestone. For the first half of this week's episode, we're going to be doing some news stories that I've been wanting to discuss, but we'll do something unique and Halloween-related after the break. So let's, story with a, well, so let's start with a news story about tires. Now, according to Road & Track, link in the description, NASCAR is looking into the idea of rain tires on short ovals. According to the article, and this is a direct quote, Wet weather tires have been discussed and tested prior to the the debut of the NASCAR next-gen car. Now, our sources say that NASCAR is forging ahead with implementing this plan for certain short ovals in 2023. One development is in the packet. One development in the package that will be seen in 2023 is an updated rain light. It will still flash in wet weather conditions, but will now go solid when the driver goes on the brakes. A huge help when visibility is low and drivers can't tell whether the car in front starts braking. Okay, fair enough, that makes sense. Going back to the article, there will be two rectangular lights mounted inside the rear window and two lights mounted below the rear bumper and diffuser. Again, good move. The short oval tracks that are likely to see the availability of the wet weather practice include places like Martinsville and Phoenix, along with the possibility of others like New Hampshire. Now this is more of a wet surface solution than a true rain racing solution, but it could significantly reduce delays when there is rain. The best way to look at this solution is that it could replace the last 30 or 40 minutes of jet drying instead of instead allowing the cars to go racing on damp pavement. Uh, the article also states that standing water will still delay a race start since hitting that at speed is dangerous no matter what the track. Now, with this new rain tire policy, I just don't see this working out well at all. Even at the slower, shorter tracks like Martinsville, grip is still a necessity. And without as much grip as possible in a dry track, this could lead to disaster. Never mind the fact that rain tires were never meant to be used on ovals to begin with. Furthermore, how do you test these? It's not like you can plan out a few months and say, hey, uh, Martinsville will have a rainstorm on August 6th, so let's go test the rain tires then. Uh, Now, they said that these have been tested, but there was no indication from anybody as to when, where, and how these tests were, how these tests were conducted. Are we talking lab tests? Are we talking track testing? How do you test this? And again, I, I'm in, I, I hate rain delays as much as anybody. And NASCAR television rain delay is just almost unwatchable. However, I, putting the, the ability of putting the drivers in danger in order to present a race isn't exactly a smart idea. Remember, the Gen 7 car has issues that have led to driver injuries and I'm not 100% sure that all these problems are going to be fixed and we'll talk about that in a few minutes too I just I hope this isn't true I hope it's just a rumor but knowing NASCAR they might go through with this and that scares me now we're going to turn to the uh, big news story of the last few weeks I didn't comment on this at the time because I wanted to see how NASCAR would handle this and how all of this plays out. Well, I wasn't disappointed. Let's talk about Bubba Wallace's suspension. Uh, At Las Vegas, you know, I'm just going to go through what happened. Las Vegas and Kyle Larson got together. Uh, Wallace got into the wall. Then he intentionally wrecked out Larson and collected Christopher Bell in the process. And then Wallace got out of his car and began repeatedly and angrily shoving Larson. In response to this, NASCAR suspended Wallace for the Homestead race, citing violations of sections 4.3.A, 4.4.C, and E of the NASCAR Member Code of Conduct. Furthermore, according to ESPN, uh, 2311 Racing, Denny Hamlin in particular, said that they will be dealing with this matter in a way that goes above and beyond the penalties handed down by NASCAR, though what exactly this meant was not elaborated on. I think Wallace did something incredibly stupid. Could have caused serious injuries because, again, the uh, 
fixes to the car. I don't know if they've been started on yet, but I guarantee you not all the cars have been fixed if they have. Um, Christopher Bell, who's still competing for a championship, he had his chances knocked down a few pegs. Um, Wallace could have gotten injured. Uh, Larson could have gotten injured. Bell could have gotten injured. Someone else who wasn't even involved could have gotten injured. I think NASCAR made the right decision. Now, there are some people, Kyle Petty in particular, who think that he should have been suspended for the last three races of the season. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with that logic. Uh, given everything that's going on with safety, I don't disagree with that logic. But I think it's still a good move that NASCAR made anyway. Um, again, it's it's there's a difference between accidentally getting together and then wiping somebody out. Bubba Wallace wiped him out. It's it's not even up for debate. So yeah, with that out of the way, we're gonna switch to a different thing for the next part of the podcast. I'm gonna do something Halloween themed, and you'll understand momentarily. So I'll be right back. And we're back. So as you can see by the visual, we're doing something a little different for this week's, the second half of this week's podcast, because there is more to life than racing. And I'm a big fan of the game Team Fortress 2, and they're doing the 14th edition of their Scream Fortress event, which is you go to Halloween maps in casual mode, you play for, you try to achieve certain goals, and once you do, you get Halloween pumpkins. And Halloween pumpkins, each one of them contains a cosmetic item. And so we're going to open them right now. Class. We have a lot of them this year, so... Cosmetic for the spy, an undead pet, and a ghoulish games cage, which I'm probably going to delete. The Candyman's Cap. I might actually have a whole um, setup for the Grave Pit Emperor, but I'll have to look at that one later. Fawn feed for the scout. The Einstein. The head taker's hood. I've been wanting one of these for a while. It's basically a balloon that follows you around when the server's in Halloween mode. Ooh, we got another 2-1. The Horseman's Hand-Me-Down, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's a cape. And another one of these. Ethereal hood. The 
haunted pocket horseman and a spellbook page. You can add it to your spellbook. Hold on, I just want to see something. Okay. The Soviet stitch up and another spellbook page. I don't know if it makes the spellbook any more power or any more or less powerful, but the Halloweener. Okay, I, I, I'm going to use the Halloweener hot dog thing for the scout. The Rumpelweener. Oh yeah, and you periodically get either stuff you already have or doubles. The Voodoo Sniper and another Spellbook page. I'm not doing anything with my Pyro loadout, because my Pyro loadout is perfect. A heavy voodoo curse, I want a war paint. It's just the soldier mask. The thing with the paper bag masks, if you're not familiar with TF2, is you can combine, if you get all nine, you can combine them and make them into a mask of uh, another character, Saxton Hale. I'm not going to get too much into that. Sir Hootsalot. You can also use these hats to create other hats. for a while and the thing with um, like I said these things aren't tradable or marketable so if you do have something that someone else wants you know you can't sell it or give it away the unknown monkey knot another case I usually don't do loot boxes, so it's... The T. 
tale from the crypt. You know, I actually missed that show. I didn't like it that much when I was growing up, but I got into it a little later in life. Unidentified following object. But yeah, the, but I, I did like the Crypt Keeper. And I do think that show could make a comeback. A claws and effect. And another spellbook page and a war paint case. As an airplane flies overhead. Of course, where else would it be flying? Another tale from the crypt. And again, there is a way to uh, make a new hat. These any any cosmetic item is really referred to as a hat. So. I can sh I'll show you how to do it as soon as we're done here. We got two more to go. The Pocket Horseman. As if I need five of these things. The Hard Headed Hardware. That is actually frightening looking. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to build so you go through and you find the one So you find the one thing that you want to melt. Okay, so for example, I have a mastermind, and then what do I want to melt? The hero's tale. Buck Turner All Stars. Apparently, these are very rare, so I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, that about does it for this week. I'm Dave Firestone. I'll leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you for next week's episode, episode 43 of Driver's Seat Blog Radio.